Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, actually afternoon here along the West Coast. It is the Earth Master back here on this, goodness, already Friday, October 27th, 2023, about 12, 16 p.m. California time. Latest activity looks like a 5.1 earthquake coming into the area of the Middle America Trench. That's going to be this area right down here. USGS not picking up on it yet, but it looks like it may be off the coast here of the Nicaragua area, potentially Honduras region, somewhere within the Middle America Trench here. Did see some activity stirring up last night across the Hawaii area as well. Still kind of watching this region. Uh, the Kilauea volcano been quite active in terms of earthquake activity. Overnight, we did see a, a 3.7, but that was situated down here across the Pahala area. Noticing an overall trend in earthquake activity, specifically across the southeastern edge here of the Big Island. A lot of uh, intrusion of magma going on here below the surface. A look at the latest information here on the earthquake activity at Kilauea Volcano. Still shows uh, quite a few earthquakes overnight. So with that being said, let's go ahead and check out the uh, latest tilt meter here across the area. That gives us another good indication of what's going on below. And uh, this is actually a really cool site here from the USGS to check out. It's got many different instruments out here to choose from, from cameras, GPS, gas, infrasound, size, seismometer, uh, tilt meters, all that kind of stuff. Even, like I say, webcams out here. You can see uh, the webcams of the um, Lava Lake area, which is still fairly smoky. Volcanic gases have uh, continued to seep up there through cracks. That's very common. Um, I don't know if it even ever stops up here uh, across this area. But no visible lava up there at the uh, crater area. I want to check out the tilt meter here today and see what we have. It looks as though this is going to be the last two days right here. We, we started to see the inflation kick back up here about two days ago. Now we're starting to see, at least in the last couple hours, deflation. So that's kind of surprising because the long-term trend here has shown a, uh, you know, kind of a, a reoccurrence of uh, intrusion here, which is inflation followed by a couple days of deflation, intrusion and inflation, uh, and then a little bit of deflation. I thought we were coming back up here in the past couple days, but it looks like we're starting to take a nosedive, maybe. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, there has been other times where it looks like it's wanted to dip a little bit, and then it will kick back up. So, uh, we'll see throughout the day if this picks up or not in terms of the inflation going on there at the Big Island, on the Big Island, underneath the Big Island at Kilauea Volcano. A latest information statement here from the HVO states that the volcano is currently not erupting and it's just the same message that they've been stating here for the past few days that uh, an eruptive activity is possible in the coming weeks or months. Uh, no unusual activity across the rift zones for now. And they talk about the earthquake swarms and whatnot. And we're just kind of keeping an eye on it, seeing uh, how this plays out in terms of uh, the future eruption possibility there at Kilauea Volcano. All right, anything else going on as far as uh, worldwide activity goes? Well, looks, let's go ahead and check out the largest magnitude, see what we got here. Uh, so far today, looks like we did see a 5.2 back building here across the uh, New Caledonia region. South of Vanuatu in this little horseshoe bend of a plate boundary. A little bit of activity stretching across the, uh, of course, the Hawaii area and the Pahala region. Looks like they had quite a bit of earthquake activity in the 2 and 3 range. But um, So let's go over and check out the Earthquake 3D globe, see what we got. There's that, what appears to be a 5-pointer there in the Middle America Trench. Another 2.0 coming into Hawaii. Uh, we did see a little bit of activity stirring up here across the areas outside of, uh, it's going to be over here, it looks like, eastern Afghanistan region. Uh, one odd earthquake over here, and uh, well, I say odd because this is the area, or at least outside of the area, where we've seen that large-scale movement in Afghanistan here. Uh, in the past month, you guys remember the sixes kicking up here in western Afghanistan? Now, this specific area of Iran uh, does see some earthquake activity, I believe. i bring up the earthquake map here and see what we got. Yeah, the earthquake activity in uh, western Afghanistan was uh, kicking up up here. 
in this area, which is not historically active in terms of large-scale movement. But over here in uh, eastern Iran, definitely shows uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity there historically. So not an odd one, a 5.1 out here uh, in Iran. That's from yesterday. A little bit of movement into the uh, Russia area. Where'd that one go? Well, that's way up north. North of Mongolia. Um, around this little, is that a lake? It looks like a little lake up here. Beautiful lake, actually. It looks pretty large. Uh, that is going to be a 4.4 coming in earlier this morning. Uh, a handful of earthquakes. It looks like, well, at least one earthquake down here in the Prince Edward Islands region of the... Southwest Indian Ridge here, south of Africa. That earthquake coming in early this morning, about 5 o'clock for that 4.8. So more divergent boundary activity, it looks like, picking up here in the past couple days. Uh, still waiting on some movement here across New Zealand. It just hasn't happened. It looks like, let me check out the Earthquake 3D globe here. See what we got. Some older movement quakes there from last night. Uh, but let's just double check. Let me bring this map back up. Sorry, guys. Uh, and see what we got for earthquake activity here across New Zealand. Three hours ago, we got a 2.3. 2.7 from yesterday. Doesn't look like too much is stirred up overnight here across the New Zealand region. Just kind of waiting for this to fill in. Uh, but the seismograph stations don't lie. This is the actual data. That's being monitored there across the size or across the uh, North Island and South Island area of New Zealand, and as you can see, well, it's awfully quiet. All right, uh, what else we got here? Let's go ahead and check out the West Coast area, California. Anything spectacular going on there? Let me shut off my phone here. Keep forgetting to uh, shut it down during the updates. All right. Southern California area, a couple earthquakes here in the last hour. That's going to be mainly some small microquakes here off the Elsinore Fault, the southern end. Uh, the San Andreas Fault here for now remains pretty quiet, um, at least along this segment here, the southern segment. Further up north, north of Lancaster, um, or west of Lancaster, we got a little bit of activity stirring up here on the San Andreas Fault itself. Uh, but it's just a 1.8 and a 1.0, but not a whole lot down here across the southern segment for now. Uh, minimal activity across the uh, Bay Area for the most part. And up in the northern California region, a handful of earthquakes it looks like, including around the Lake Albanore area, 2.1, underneath this area from yesterday. A little typical activity. I'm calling it typical up here now across Mount St. Helens because it's just been an ongoing sequence of little earthquakes around the uh the extreme summit area of the mount st helens volcano i want to check something here real quick see if they've updated any of these uh, uh gps maps here across the area extreme summit area here lava dome mount st helens some of these work some of these don't i believe this is the most recent data because these are in two-year intervals uh, 2023 would be right here. We're halfway. This, yeah, so this is updated information here. I'm really not seeing any huge GPS uh, indicated uplift or inflation across the area. I'm not 100% certain what's causing the little microquake earthquake swarm, uh, but it's actually pretty interesting there. So we'll continue to watch this uh, trend, see if it takes a turn upwards. But for the most part, these GPS stations are showing very minimal um, activity at best there when it comes to uh, any type of inflation. Uh, let's see, what do we got here across Idaho, Wyoming? Uh, let me check out the Yellowstone seismograph stations here real quick. And let's see what we got. There's some of that odd earthquake activity from last night I was chatting about. Uh, I still don't know what that was. It looks like it's underneath this area, not over here and not over westward or southward or northward. It's just centered underneath this area. These look like distant earthquakes. And the ones I'm talking about are these right here. These kind of look like some distant earthquakes, but 
far away. They don't have that well-defined spike that you would see in a localized earthquake. So it's possible these could be um, maybe some geysers going off, I don't know, or some deeper quakes underneath the area. Nothing really shown up here on the USGS map, though, so just a little odd. All right, uh, Texas area looking pretty active here yesterday and today outside of Pecos and uh, specifically around the Pecos, Texas area uh, where there's a, uh, well, a massive amount of oil fields and pumping operations. Here on this specific map, it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, but there's a wastewater disposal pond along with some pumping operations right here. They're just all over the place here in this area of Texas. And it looks like that's getting hit a little bit there today with earthquake activity. The rest of the states here look very minor. Not a whole lot of movement stirring up out there across the area today. Uh, South America region, uh, these two earthquakes from yesterday. Uh, but a look on the earthquake 3D globe here. Let's see what we got. Some uh, mainly twos and threes out there. Well, watch the Middle America Trench. Goodness, that is a pretty deep earthquake on the globe. That uh, white ring here. Uh, USGS not picking up on it yet. But uh, that's a pretty deep earthquake there into the Middle America Trench. So we'll watch areas upstream uh, for some potential movement. Uh, let's see here. I think that's about it for earthquake activity. There's a 5.0. Which one was that? Let's see here real quick. Is that the one in Iran? I believe that's going to be it on the globe. The one that we see right over here. So, uh, Mediterranean looks fairly quiet. Only a handful of earthquakes there from yesterday. Not a whole lot today. Continue to watch this as we spin around and see what happens for earthquake activity. Space weather activity? Well, let's see. We did have a little inflare event last night. A long duration inflare event, event with an eruptive type of uh, status there. It shot off a large CME away from Earth, unfortunately. Uh, but um, it looks like things have calmed down here since last night. Not seen a whole lot of flaring activity. Uh, that M flare did shoot off from 3473, which is going to be this general sunspot. That's the uh, older image from last night, the most recent image here. Uh, it still does not look all that impressive whatsoever. They're just, they're large as far as the general uh, sunspot region goes, but they're. Um, they're wimpy within the, the magnetic fields, the cores here. So, um, goodness, I don't, I can't say there is too much pro uh, possibility there of seeing any further large flaring, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on this area uh, in the coming days, see if it wants to come back. Right now, 40% chance for a C flare, M flare 5, and X in the proton event there, pretty low. SFI index is still awfully low as well. Uh, I'm not really looking at any major geomagnetic storms in the forecast. Now the SFI, um, influx, the solar flux progression chart of, of the SFI still shows the older model here. This is the predicted sunspot number. Notice we're still way ahead. But the uh, NOAA folks have introduced an experimental uh, re-evaluated um, progression and prediction of sunspots here for the solar cycle 25 and they're saying it's going to max out no longer in 2025 it'll be between january of 2024 and october of that year so sometime we're right around here and then we'll start going back down uh, we're not expecting that uh, in the summertime of 2025 anymore so we'll continue to watch that and see how this plays out uh, this has been this is still from september we'll have to watch this and see I'm sure it's going to drastically go way down here with this uh, with this month having very minimal sunspot uh, activity. All right, uh, what else we got here for weather? Anything major going on? Doesn't look like it. Thunderstorm activity. A little marginal risk here for uh, looks like maybe just a little bit of wind out there across areas of Illinois and Missouri region. Right across this little area in the 5% zone. But aside from that, not a whole lot going on there in terms of uh, severe weather. A look at the uh, long-range models. Man, it dipped down. And, and 
You probably laugh when somebody says, man, it got cold last night. It dropped down to 32 degrees. Well, for this area of the valley, Sacramento Valley, that's actually pretty cold for us this time of year. Um, yeah, we can get some 30s in the wintertime in December and January. But for October, it's that was a little chilly last night. Uh, yeah, it dropped down to 32 degrees here at my place. Luckily, I moved everything in or at least up against the place as far as plants go. Sensitive, frost sensitive plants because I'm sure there was frost out there. I wasn't up that early this morning. I didn't want to be uh, frozen. But uh, the cold pressure, or the low pressure, that's bringing all that cold air over here across the West Coast is going to scoot out and develop rapidly across the eastern portion there of the country for Halloween night and into the first week of November. going to be a cold and chilly Halloween for a lot of these folks out here. Uh, out here along the West Coast, we got that flip-flop pattern uh, event here with high pressure building back in across the west coast i'm hoping that goes away i've been checking these weather models here um, again it's not that accurate as you get extensively far out for the most part these things can change you know overnight but for the most part the couple days or so in this weather model um, you can pretty much it could be accurate, but anything after uh, a few days or so, uh, it's a little iffy. These things can change in the blink of an eye. So who knows if that high pressure will remain out parked along the West Coast or not. I'm hoping not. Either way, uh, what else we got here, folks? I think that's about it. Um, really not a whole lot else going on here. Uh, on my neck of the woods, in my neck of the woods, I should say, uh, it's Friday. And just be careful and safe out there. Uh, the seismograph stations look uh, fairly calm for the most part. Not seeing any major um, earthquake activity showing up on there for now. Enjoy your Friday, and uh, we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight for the Friday night party. Have a good one. Peace out, folks. <laughs>